for the Resource Scholars Online and On Air Show. Broadcasting intelligent and spirited talk with James Posey, Reggae Bob, and Kamal Rogers. We're going to be talking about uh, Kwanzaa and the impact that has from a business standpoint to to culture, to education. What is Kwanzaa? What what is Kwanzaa all about? To entertainment aspects of, of Kwanzaa. So who wants to uh, we'll take the first one, which is the uh, business component of this. Business. And I'll, I'll get us started. I know when it first started. Uh, in 66. So if you look at from that point on, Kwanzaa is probably a billion dollar industry at this point. I mean, you do see things. There's Kwanzaa candles that are being sold. Uh, in fact, uh, Hallmark has has a Kwanzaa section. Now, they have the cards, they have the candles. So people are actually look, are looking and, and making making money off, off, of, off of Kwanzaa at this point. I know I've celebrated it for a, a long time, uh, especially when my kids were young. And we used to go to Marcus Bookstores, which is a black bookstore in, in San Francisco. Mm-hmm. And we get stuff at, at other places in Oakland. We did Kwanzaa Bingo. We played all kinds of games for the kids when we would celebrate so they'd have things. So I think um, I, I, I'll say this. If people are making money off of it, I don't know necessarily how much black people are making off of it. Mm-hmm. So when we first started, people used to make our own gifts. You could go to Marcus Books and buy things that people, black folks had made and sold. I know a lot of the pop ups now with young people, they have materials that they make and that they sell in, in a pop up situation for for Kwanzaa. So there, there is that aspect of the business. But those are really small mom and pops operations. And in terms of something that can scale to do a hallmark. I don't know that there's any um, black organizations that are doing that. We do have some black people that are selling candles and things like that. In um, I think uh, some of them are doing like they got a Walmart contract or something like that. So mm-hmm. there is a scaling for that. I don't know how much of that is is really black owned or operated. So that's something I'd have to look into. I, I know it's, it's a lot of that's changed and that's been recent. That's been in recent years. So okay. what what are, what are you what is your take on that, Bob? Well, for me, um, I know Kwanzaa, when it comes to the money aspect, the business aspect, I mean, most of the business is, is with the, the setup, um, the, 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 the candles, the right. canara, and, and the mat, and, and, and the setup. But, you know, thank goodness uh, the gift part of Kwanzaa didn't, didn't spill over or become anything like Christmas when, it, right. when anything goes right. everything you know you get a car you get you get yeah. flowers you get you get a cat or a dog or a, a big expensive pet no that that's not what Kwanzaa gifts are about Kwanzaa gifts are supposed to be supposed to be handmade handmade right. gifts that you know your craft craft that you make with your own self your own hands your own heart like you said come out uh, the, the 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 setups the gifts the, the crafts you know put together and sold by black folks a lot pop ups yes for sure, but at the same time yes we got to get our Kwanzaa cards Kwanzaa cards right. lucky for us we got a, a store here in in Portland that's black owned and operated JP's Arts and Gifts they have been doing Kwanzaa for years and they have the setup they sell the setups we're lucky here in Portland and hopefully where you are folks watching and listening you can get the setup from somebody or a black business in your neighborhood or in your, you have to drive a little ways to go get it. I mean, right. you get it through the mail, it's okay. You know, Amazon's okay. But come on, we, we want it to come from a black business, if at all possible, because after all, it's our holiday. Yeah. What, what about you, James? What do you look at it from a business standpoint? Well, yeah, I, I you know, this whole idea of uh, Christmas and, and Kwanzaa and all of it, uh, to a certain degree, has gotten so commercialized that it really kind of turns me off. I'm just going to be honest about it. It, it you know, it kind of misses the whole idea of, you know, what's behind all of this. And sometimes you get to commercialize and everything. And, and you know, like you take Kwanzaa, uh, uh, you know, the whole concept is embracing your African culture. Now, I know we're going to talk about culture later, later on, but these issues of how African people 
uh, use these seven principles to bring us together, to strengthen our culture, to really, uh, 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 you know, acknowledge our humanity and the fact that we are people of the earth and, and, and it brings us together with all the values. It's all, you know, uh, many of these values, you can correlate those with some of the biblical principles. And so it becomes a more of a spiritual thing about understanding how, what our purpose is on earth, as opposed to us looking at all the symbolism. And right. it goes back to uh, the person that I'm, I'm most um, uh, recognizable in Portland is Joyce Harris. Uh, who is yeah. an educator. She, she really right. spends an enormous amount of time, um, you know, talking about Kwanzaa and presenting it and, and marketing it, really marketing right. it because Black right. people, I mean, I'm, I'm one of those who, who, who really didn't really understand what Kwanzaa was. And, you know, this is an intervention. I mean, this is an invention made by some Black person and comes up in 1966 and it's a tradition. And, you know, all of these things become mystical unless you understand what, you know, where they come from, what the meanings are. Uh, I never knew anything about Africa. All I knew about Africa was Tarzan and, and, and these little apes. And, you know, I mean, all, I, all we've been, people in my generation has been uh, uh, taught, really conditioned to run from their African heritage. Uh, right. The people, you ask a black person in my generation, do they want to go back to Africa? They say, hell no, I ain't lost nothing in Africa. I mean, I'm just being honest with you about oh. it. Yeah. They don't want to go. They don't have nothing to do with Africa. Uh, uh, but at the end of the day, changing the culture, changing our mindset about what white folk have taught us is the most valuable thing I see about Kwanzaa. Um, and, and and when when I look at Kwanzaa and how I, I was exposed to it, it, it came through reflections and Ob and Gloria and the coffee shop where we we actually had books on uh, African culture. We talked about. Uh, you know, Pan-Africanism, um, you know, I mean, so it's an educational thing. I know we're going right. to talk about education, but right. at the end of the day, that's what Kwanzaa has to be about for me. When I first heard about Kwanzaa myself, I thought it was a religious thing. I thought it was religion and it was different than Christmas, different than celebrating Jesus. So I didn't, you know, I wasn't going to get in there. It's African, this African thing. I couldn't get in there. But once, once I got woke, as we say, woke, and it was probably somewhere around Reflections Coffee Shop in Portland. That yeah, Kwanzaa, Kwanzaa every time, Kwanzaa every year. You got to have your candle. You got to have your canara. You got to have your mat. Uh, you can't always get the other pieces that go with it. But you got those basics. And you I, I, Kwanzaa. We got about we got about thirty seconds. But I want to say I, I agree with you. Yeah. I agree with both of y'all. Is that because really that's the business part of this? If you don't have a woke or educated populace, they can't. They they won't participate. Mm -mm. And so really the aspect of a business thing is we have to keep the culture of uh, the, the people understanding what it is so that they, they then can see the purpose for for participating in it. And then they would go out and buy a candle. They will buy a book and start to learn about it. So I totally agree with you guys on on that. But I, I want to caution you guys, like everything else in the world, you, we can, you know, Kwanzaa can be exploited. I got a picture. I don't know if you guys can see this picture. Uh, but here's a dude that used to uh, uh, be in the head of the NAACP. Uh, he is Father Kwanzaa over at the Lloyd Center Mall. And, you know, you guys know the story of this dude. He is having yeah. little kids sit on his lap. Oh, you, you get me? And this yeah. guy, his reputation for dealing with kids is not the best in the world. I ain't going to mention no names. Uh, and then they took money. They took money and used it. Uh, uh, took money, uh, used Kwanzaa as an instrument for uh, to collect money, and said it was for black kids. And really, they would put it in their pockets. So everything we do can be exploited if you know what I'm talking about, guys. <laughs>